tinnitus, depending on what part of the country you're from. What is it? Basically, it's a perception that you have, a ringing in the ear or in both ears or in the head that other people can't hear, but it is very real to you. Tinnitus itself okay, can have several causes, which we'll get into in a minute, but it, it, the important thing to understand is that it is real. It does not mean that you're having a mental break. It is really there, but it's being produced in your head. Okay? Some of the causes of tinnitus. The most common cause of tinnitus is hearing loss. It's your body's way of saying something's wrong. It's like your little alarm in your head saying, you used to hear this pitch, now you don't, so these neurons are just gonna fire until they get your attention, okay? That is the most common cause of tinnitus. It is absolutely not the only cause of tinnitus, but that is the most common. Vascular issues, blood flow issues can absolutely cause tinnitus. Some people report, uh, the most common thing we see with this is people report, not only do I have the ringing, but the ringing pulses. It kind of feels like a heartbeat. Well, that would be because it's vascularly related. Okay, that is very common and that can happen. Next would be dietary issues. Now, I don't mean you're allergic to shellfish. What I mean is some people, when they have too much of either alcohol, sugar, salt, or caffeine, I know all the good stuff in life, they actually have increases in the amount of tinnitus they have. Now, the dietary stuff does not normally cause the tinnitus, but it does exacerbate it. It makes it worse. So you'll go from, I hear it mildly in the background only when it's quiet, to the day after St. Patrick's Day, maybe you had a few too many green beers, and the next morning you had a few too many cups of coffee. Now all of a sudden you feel like, oh my God, it's ringing constantly. That does happen, and it can take sometimes a day or so to kick in, even for dietary issues. So if you are having tinnitus, and you have good days and bad days, start keeping a log of what you ate or drank the day before. That's not for weight loss or anything like that. That's just because if you find, hey, every time I have a second glass of red wine, I have worse ringing in the ear, now you have to make a decision. Is the worst ringing in the ear worth the second glass of wine? That's a decision you can make, but it is very important for you to identify your triggers when it comes to uh, tinnitus. Medications and um, medication interactions can cause tinnitus. When a medication affects the ears, it's generally called ototoxic. That's kind of the word you're looking for with your medications. With tinnitus specifically, they will generally say, causes tinnitus, ringing in the ears. Depending on what the medication's for, again, if we're talking about cancer medication, if it's keeping cancer at bay, I'll take tinnitus every day of the week, depending on what it's for, again. Before you go off or on any medications, consult with your primary care doctor, please. Um, and then other underlying diseases. Tinnitus can be signs of other underlying diseases. One of the things we look for when patients come in complaining of tinnitus in one ear is, is there a hearing asymmetry as well as a tinnitus asymmetry? If there is, we generally will refer them to a neurootologist who generally will order an MRI or a CT scan to rule out any sort of pathology in the brain itself. Treatment for tinnitus. Surgery, not an option. Medications, really not an option. Now, a lot of doctors, or a lot of patients of mine who see doctors for tinnitus, tell me that they're prescribed either anti-anxiety medication or other similar medications understand that the, the medications are not controlling the tinnitus. They're controlling your response to and feelings about the tinnitus. The way that tinnitus works is the more you focus on it, the worse it gets. If you can kind of ignore it and not think about it, you'll actually notice it a little bit less and it gets better and better, okay? I know that's easier said than done, but that's the basics. Second, sound therapy. 
They make little things called tinnitus maskers. They look just like hearing aids. They're also more expensive than hearing aids and they do less. They will produce either a white noise or a pink noise that is designed to mask or cover up the tinnitus. Hearing aids, on the other hand, when it comes to masking tinnitus, some research says that if there's hearing loss and tinnitus, it's about 70% effective. Some people's research I've seen is 70% to 60%, depending on the study. And also depends on the severity of hearing loss and the amount of tinnitus you're having. But hearing aids use ambient noise, especially when there's an underlying hearing problem. So if you're not hearing at 6,000 hertz and your tinnitus is at 6,000 hertz, the hearing aid amplifying the sound at 6,000 hertz, giving your brain access to that noise, actually reduces the amount of tinnitus that you perceive. Hearing aids can also have the white noise or pink noise generation for masking tinnitus as well. The final, uh, the final type is treatment. Okay, it's called cognitive behavioral therapy. Basically what this does is, and, and I apologize if I'm oversimplifying this, I am not an expert in cognitive behavioral therapy, even for tinnitus, that's not my field of expertise, but the basics are that it helps to disassociate the tinnitus or the noise in your ear from something negative reassociating it with something more positive, which allows you to be more at peace with the sound, which allows you to ignore it, and then finally to notice it less, okay? The research actually shows that cognitive behavioral therapy is more effective than sound therapy. Not a lot more effective, but it is more effective. The difference is sound therapy is a very passive approach you wear the hearing aids, you wear the tinnitus mask masker, and it does the job of masking out the tinnitus. And as you mask the tinnitus, you think about it less, therefore you notice it less when you're not wearing them. On the other hand, cognitive behavioral therapy requires quite a bit of effort and work on your part.